five celebrities are taking on the challenge to become the next MasterChef champion. But at the end of today, only the best will make it through. I feel like I've just jumped out of an aeroplane, and I'm hoping that maybe John or Greg might catch me. I am so excited because I love to cook. I think I'm a good cook because people tell me I am, but who knows? I've come here to win. There's a space on my mantelpiece already waiting for this. I'm nervous about today. I like to prepare, but no, no preparation, just to cook. <laughs> I don't want to use the phrase a minute to win it, but I think I'm just in it. You are our last batch of celebrity contestants. And who knows, we may well have the winner in front of us. Your first challenge is the mystery box. Inside that box, you all have a set of ingredients, the same ingredients. We would like from you one plate of food in 50 minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, reveal your ingredients. Today's ingredients include pork loin, trout, cauliflower, beetroot, raspberries, and white chocolate. The celebrities will also have the use of a basic larder. One great plate of food, 50 minutes. Let's cook. Lisa Maxwell has had a long career in TV, in shows such as The Bill and Loose Women. Cooking for me is stressful. Ugh. I tend to run around on the spot, going, right, OK, what am I going to do, what am I going to do, what am I going to do? I'm really not that confident a cook. Lisa, are you, are you OK? You look a little stressed. I'm so stressed, I can't tell you. Why? It's the first day, so I'm just, in the abstract, I'm just one big ball of stress. All right, tell me what, it, what you're attempting to make, please. Apple and raspberry, fruit compote thing with a crumble top yeah. with pecans and almonds. What, what are you doing here in this competition? <laughs> well, that's what I was thinking. What am I blooming doing here? <laughs> um, I'm here because I need to learn to cook, Greg. I'm 50 la la, and it's quite frankly, it's embarrassing. So how far realistically do you think you can go in the, in the competition? About half an hour. Lisa was running around all frantic and really, really panicky. Tell you what, if Lisa presents us a really lovely bowl of apple raspberry crumble with custard, I'm going to be really, really happy. And the bald one's going to be ecstatic. Country singer Stella Parton has released 31 albums over her 50-year career. Well, my big sister, Dolly Parton, is just one of my six sisters. All my sisters would say, oh, yes, I'm the best cook in this family. <laughs> I guess you would say I'm a country cook. I like the southern recipes that I grew up cooking, and so I try to cook them as best I can. Stella obviously knows how to cook. She's got a fry pan with some piece of pork loin frying with smoked paprika. She's got a pot full of black-eyed peas, and she's got another pot with cauliflower and loads and loads of horseradish sauce. As long as that pork is cooked just through and it's still a little bit pink, so it's not dry, I'll be really happy. Stella, where are you from? I'm from Tennessee, the mountains of East Tennessee. I'm a mountain cook and a mountain girl. Fantastic. Big family? I have six sisters and five brothers. And was, was everybody musical? Yes, we are. Would you sing for us at some stage? I'll sing now. Go on, Ed. Well, that's the danger of a stranger that you meet in the dark. When you let him lead you on until you don't know who you are. Then you wake up in the morning, he's made off with your heart. That's the danger of a stranger in the dark. Stella, that's beautiful. I am impressed. Good. 
I'm looking forward to this. OK, great. Guys, you are halfway. TV presenter and furniture designer Jay Blades is a regular on shows Money for Nothing and The Repair Shop. I can't wait to see how I perform in this. If they tell you, Jay, you got it right, happy days. If they say, Jay, nah, it's not great, it's not going to feel good. Can I ask you, any links at all, do you think, between furniture, furniture making, furniture restoration and cooking? Not that I know of, but it's, <laughs> it's, it's about looking good. So I've got all the colours that I want at the end. It's going to look good, but I don't know if it's going to taste good. That's my only problem. What are you making? Well, I'm doing a fish wrapped up in tin foil. I've got my little onion and peppers kind of gravy. What's going to go alongside it. Then I'm going to do a beetroot salad. What do you want from this competition, big fella? I want a trophy. I believe I'm good enough. Jay is cooking the trout really nicely. He's wrapped it in foil and put it in the oven. That's the way it should be done. What Jay's going to be careful of is he leaves the fish in the oven for long enough that it cooks all the way through to the backbone. Feeling nervous, but I'm going to get it done. DJ Clara Ampho is best known for her Radio 1 daytime show. Listen, I'm not going to lie, by nature, I'm a bit of a haphazard person. I'm a Gemini. I'm one thing one day and one the next. Most of the time, I'm just a bit of a mess, hoping for the best result. It smells good. Clara, you're, you're, you're doing something sweet. I am doing something sweet, because I've got a sweet tooth. I'm a sugar fiend. I'm obsessed with desserts. I love to eat them, and now I think I'm going to make one. So what are you making? Um, I think I'm making a raspberry cheesecake. Isn't there often cheese in a cheesecake? There, no, there's cream cheese. There's cream cheese. Yes, OK. You can't make a cheesecake without any cream cheese. The president got a bowl full of raspberry milkshake with an egg white in it, which she is hoping in some way will set. I'm going to garnish this really nicely so they don't notice it's actually not a cheesecake. Ballroom dancer AJ Pritchard has been a professional on Strictly Come Dancing since 2016. Usually I've got a partner, so I've got somewhere to fall back on. But here, I'm on my own, so if I do overcook that food, it's my fault. I can only blame myself at the end of the day. AJ? Yep. I was on Strictly. Yes. And I'm really hoping you cook better than I danced. Yeah, that's the plan, yeah. Do you cook? I, I cook to survive. What, what are you making now? At the moment, I'm doing sweet potato and butternut squash puree. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to do uh, yeah, the fish. Imagine it's a fast foxtrot, not a waltz. <laughs> OK. All right. I think more of a quick step at the moment, but, yeah. AJ has just filleted a trout. The problem is AJ has filled his fish in such a way that there's lots of skin and very little flesh. It's not gone so well. That piece of trout is so thin, it's going to take a matter of seconds to cook. You have just five minutes left. Three minutes. Time's up. Stop. Well done, everybody. Bosh. <laughs> Jay? Yes, sir. Can you and your fish come up here, please? Next up is TV presenter Jay Blades, who's made baked trout stuffed with peppers and onions, with baked sweet potato and an onion and chilli garnish. You've overcooked that fish. Overcooked it? Yeah, you've overcooked it. Oh, and it goes a little bit mushy. This onion, pepper malarkey. What, are you supposed to eat that or are you supposed to strip varnish off a bit of furniture <laughs> with it? Because that is just <laughs> volcanic, mate. Is it spicy, yeah? Spicy? 
<laughs> just took the enamel off my teeth. <laughs> what I am impressed with is I think you've put things together that actually really do work. And what you need is a little bit more experience. That's all you need. Your sweet potato is cooked all the way through. That's lovely. Spring onions and onions and chilies together is a nice little mixture. You deliver some really good flavours. Good on you. Thank you. You know what? To done my first challenge, I feel really chuffed. It just feels as if all this water's just come off of me, cos, um, it's a lot of pressure. That's hard, man. Going first, oh, isn't it? Yeah, it is hard going first. AJ, could you dance your way over here, please? It's like the walk of shame. Ballroom dancer AJ Pritchard also used the trout, which he served pan-fried with roast cauliflower and a sweet potato and butternut squash puree. The fish tastes great. It's slightly over, but not over enough to spoil it. Nice seasoning on there. Your cauliflower's cooked really well. Your puree is a triumph. That lovely sweet puree with a cracker pepper across the top. You've got a nice touch there. Your trout is nicely cooked. Your cauliflower's nicely cooked. Your puree's really nicely done. They don't all belong together on one plate. I feel OK, actually. I feel like they, they enjoyed each individual part of the meal, but not together. Singer Stella Parton has made honey and garlic marinated pork loin with black-eyed peas cooked with spring onions, braised cauliflower with paprika and peppers, and a horseradish sauce. You are obviously an experienced cook. You've got lovely flavours there. Love the cauliflowers with the paprika across the top. That horseradish, chicken stock, and then a little bit of honey from the pork is a beautiful flavour combination. For a first round cook off on MasterChef with a bunch of ingredients you didn't know what you were going to get, that's really good. Thank you. Your pork could be cooked just a little bit less, but otherwise, everything's seasoned well. The beans, you know, they come out of a tin, so they're cooked, but you've actually put flavour back in with all those spring onions. I think that's great. I think that's really good. They were very complimentary, so it was good overall. <laughs> well done. Oh, bless you. I want to do that some more. I think that's fun. Radio 1 DJ Clara Ampho has made her take on a cheesecake. Buttery biscuit balls topped with raspberries with a raspberry fool, white chocolate buttons and cream. What that is, is a dish rescued together from the cheesecake that didn't work, right? It's the little cheesecake that could and didn't. What you actually have here, Clara, mm -hmm. are all the flavours of a really nice cheesecake. It just lacks the texture of a cheesecake. The flavours are there. You know what? At least she persisted. It tastes OK. It'd be sort of nice in the cinema. When the lights are out, you can't see what you're eating, but it tastes OK. <laughs> OK. All right. I am feeling like a raspberry fool. <laughs> Did it turn out the way I expected it to turn out? Absolutely not, but I'm glad they managed to stomach at least a few mouthfuls of what I prepared. Finally, it's actor Lisa Maxwell. She's made a spiced apple and raspberry crumble, topped with pecans and almonds, and served with custard. Star anise with the cinnamon and the apples, I think it's a lovely flavour profile. Oh, good. Your custard, <laughs> because it has curled, now actually tastes of scrambled egg. Your flavours are lovely. I mean, there's plenty of sugar in that custard. You've got nuts across the top. That's marvellous. I mean, the raspberries give a sweet sharpness. I don't think there's much wrong with you. You just need to take a deep breath. It could have been a lot worse. It really could have been a lot worse. <laughs> and breathe. I'm not too disheartened. 
Um, I think I could have done better on the custard, but hey-ho. Guys, thank you very much indeed. No major disasters. Few extraordinary creations. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Clara. Thank you. <laughs> we are going to send you on the greatest cookery lesson of your life because you are going to work in a professional kitchen doing lunchtime service for the paying public. <gasps> it's day two, and the five celebrities have been split into two groups. They're about to enter the world of the professional chef. Stella, Clara and Lisa will be cooking at the Swan at Shakespeare's Globe Theatre on the banks of the River Thames. I've been here to see plays. I've never been in anything here. This will be my first appearance Ooh. at the Globe. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Good luck, everybody. Good luck. The restaurant serves modern British cuisine under executive chef Alan Pickett. I do have high expectations. Some of the dishes are quite technical, so we need to make sure that we serve the food hot uh, and on time. Hello. Hello. Hi. So you've each got a dish at lunchtime today. So we've got duck, trout, and a lamb dish. So we've got a really busy day ahead, so we need to get cracking. You ready? OK. Yes. yes. Follow me. Let's go. <laughs> In charge of the fish course will be Clara. Ooh. She'll be making roasted rainbow trout with asparagus and morels. So while that's cooking or sealing, we're going to put asparagus into this seasoned water. Mm -hmm. So a little bit going on. This, the trout, it's got useful colour. Yep. And then we're going to put into the oven. OK. OK. While the trout roasts, Clara has just minutes to cook the accompaniments. She'll saute the morels. They're really quick. Wilt the spinach. Put a bit of water in there to create some steam. And make a chive sauce vierge. Olive oil, lemon juice, chives. Right. Perfect accompaniment for this. Now onto the plating. Really, really carefully. The trout goes on top. And this is where we get all chefy, so it looks great. You've got to make it look good. Uh huh. Ah, oh, I mean, that does look fantastic. I want to make sure it looks like that for every customer today. <laughs> Most important part is just making sure that trout's cooked. Can't serve raw trout. We've got to cook the trout. I promise. Okay. <laughs> I would want to eat this, so I think that's what's going to inspire me to try my hardest today, the fact that I basically want to be eating it rather than cooking it. While Clara starts her prep... I feel quite proud that I've been able to at least prepare some stuff. It's just about cooking it now. Lisa is faced for the first time with duck. I think it's safe to say I've not done any of this before, any of it. I'm a bit scared, but I think it's about time I learn. Never cooked duck before, and, I, and, I, and I've heard that it's notoriously difficult. It is. <laughs> Why did you give me duck? It is, it is. We need to make sure this is cooked perfectly. Get the skin really crispy. Right. So you see that's colouring up, OK? Yeah. This is beginning to sound really frightening. It's not. We'll, we'll get you there, don't worry. While the duck finishes cooking, Lisa needs to bring her veg together braised turnips and radishes, fried potatoes, and braised black cabbage. Got to make sure that all the garnish is hot and seasoned. Yeah, it's quite hard to do. So, cabbage in the middle, white turnip around. The dish will be finished off with orange marmalade strands. Is it the end of the world if we don't get the orange on? You need the orange on, because it's written on the menu. Yeah. And finally, a red wine sauce. Really importantly. How you drizzle. How you drizzle. I don't like the whole dish covered in sauce. I'll try not to let you down. I'll uh, give them a bit. Well, they need to be like that, so well, know, if they're not do. like if they're not like that, you're gonna get them back. There's 
so much to think about, and uh, I can't pretend I'm not slightly overwhelmed, if I'm honest. Stella is in charge of the lamb main. It looks good. I mean, the food is, you know, scrumptious, so I'm excited. As well as cooking the lamb cutlets to just pink, she also needs the grill lines to form a perfect crisscross pattern. I need to make sure that my bones don't burn. OK. No. Is that a no-no? That's a no-no. OK. The lamb is served with a carrot puree. Make sure everything is nice and hot. Roast onions stuffed with braised lamb shoulder. Ooh, how pretty. The dish is finished with a lamb sauce. That is exquisite. And parsley oil. No yes. more than that that's okay. on there, otherwise it's going to overpower okay. the dish. Do you think you can manage that? I can certainly try. Well, I think it's beautiful, and I haven't done lamb before, so we never cooked this at home, so I think this will be a great uh, experience, and maybe I'll have a good kitchen trick that I can take home. In central London, Jay and AJ are going to a different style of restaurant. I think, if it is, Sophie's Steaks. Sophie's Soho, a steakhouse with an open kitchen and a feature fire pit. Running the pass is head chef Sam Haffrey. I'm a little bit nervous about celebrities coming in to my kitchen today. It's uh, a big deal for us to get our dishes right first time. Hello, guys. Hi. How are you doing? Otherwise, they're not going to leave uh, my pass. How many people would you cook for normally on a lunchtime? Up to 100, 150. What? 150 yeah, 150. people? Yeah. Are you up for, for this, guys? Definitely. Yes. Come, I feel go. positive now. Let's do it. <laughs> Come on in. During service, Jay will be responsible for a roast chicken and vegetable salad. Have you worked uh, before uh, with a fire pit? No, I've done a barbecue, but my barbecue's nothing like that. Pre-steamed chicken breast has to be carefully roasted over the fire pit until it's just charred but not dry. With the fire pit, you have to keep an eye on it. You miss it, your food is gone. Jay will also need to sauté the broccoli and beetroot. Once the chicken is ready, yeah. we're going to take it to the pass and uh, plate it there. You put your chicken first, then it follows by the veg. The dish is topped with mustard dress salad leaves, which give height. Keep your plates clean. And it's finished with a salsa verde. Small. A charcoal cream and pickled carrots. That does look nice, I must say. So you want a chicken salad like that every time? Yeah, it has to look exactly to this. OK. <laughs> I'm going to give it a go. I feel proper nervous. I didn't know I was going to have to cook a whole dish. And you know everybody's healthy nowadays, you know what I mean? So you know chicken salad's going to be on the menu. Loads of people are going to want it. Before service... Get on with the job, Jay. Jay needs to prep the chicken. So I'm just doing the breast, but it's very hot in here. I'm sweating, and we haven't even started service yet. AJ is in charge of cooking steak with a classic Bernays sauce. This is a workout in itself. Woo! The ribeye steak needs to be cooked to each customer's preference over a 400-degree charcoal grill. It's hot here. I, I yeah. feel this heat's insane. OK. So we're aiming to uh, have those lines. OK. Need to have, like, a crisp, crispy, crispy. A crispy finish. Yeah. So I'm cooking a lot on the go at the same time here. Yeah. As well as watching the steaks, AJ needs to master perfect twice-cooked chips. Do I click a timer and it does it, or do I have to...? You've got to use your senses. We're just going to put a bit of bayonets on the side, and then we've got fries. Just to get it ready is more challenging, but to plate it, it's really yes. simple. No fuss in. Just got to make sure it's cooked perfect. <laughs> happy with that? I am happy. I've just got to do it, obviously, like a million more times, under a lot of pressure and, and heat. 
If I ruin that meat, then I'm going to be devastated. Obviously, it's expensive, but I better not crucify it, that's for sure. It's midday. And the restaurants are about to start service. Really importantly, when we're sending a table, we need to send it at the same time. I'm just trying to remember to just breathe and actually just enjoy cooking the dish. A busy lunch here, it's, it's a bit uh, manic. The lull before the storm. If they don't listen, they're going to fall behind. If they fall behind, that's when they're going to be in trouble. Oh, wow. Listening, one lamb pink, one trout away. We're on it. Yep. First orders are in, and Stella and Clara are off the blocks. Three and a half minutes on a trout and a lamb. Thank <gasps> you. Stella has to make sure the lamb cutlets are barbecued perfectly. I am a little warm. <laughs> it's hot in here. I never even sunbathed, so this is too hot for me. <laughs> And Clara must ensure the fish does not overcook while she sautés her vegetables. Have you seasoned them? <laughs> oh, too much, too maybe, much. Maybe, 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 maybe. Stella, how are you doing? Almost ready. Her lamb cooked, Stella now has to get the presentation spot on. Oh, what do I do? I made a mess. Oh, I made a terrible mess. Oh, but it's so pretty. Okay. Sorry. Okay, Stella, the breeze sauce needs to be in tighter, OK? I will. It is mad. You know, I like working past this way. The only thing I'm having a problem with is the parsley sauce. I need a trout. How long? Clara, are you talking to me? Hello. How long? Um, 30 seconds. Come on, come on, come up, come up. Put it on that tray with the lamb, please. Fantastic. The dish looks amazing. OK. Good. Yes. OK, first two. Let's go, please. Do you know what? It is everything and nothing like I expected it to be, to be honest. The heat in here is absolutely wild. OK, guys, two ducks. OK, two ducks. The spotlight is now on Lisa. Come on, Lisa, we've got to go. One minute on the duck. And all seven elements of her duck dish need to be plated perfectly. Come on, guys. Where's the sauce? There's no sauce. Oh, sorry, chef. Come on, come on, come sauce. on, come on. Where's the sauce? Come on, the food's going cold, Lisa. Someone's got the gravy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, thank you. Excuse me. So backs, backs, backs. Okay. OK, service. It's so stressful. I think I've remembered everything, apart from the sauce. Across town... 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. The lunchtime rush has also started. There's been absolutely loads of steaks, absolutely inundated. OK, guys, one chicken salad, one rebuy, one uh, shuttle, please. Yes, chef. Yes, chef. Jay has to master the fire pit to cook his chicken and vegetables. I don't want to be late. No, I'm not going to be late. And I don't want it going in the bin, neither. Phew! So blimey. A face on fire. While AJ has got more on his plate than he thought. I didn't realise I was cooking different steaks. I thought I was just cooking ribeye. His chicken barbecued, Jay now has to get the dish plated. So, Jay, yeah, if we put uh, chicken first, Chicken first. Chicken All right. first, and then we put uh, vegetables. Yeah, we need to start again. Try to keep food in the center of the plate. Bosh, look at that. Very nice. Cool. That was hard. That was very, very hard. Yeah, I tried to do a little bit of a style. Put my own little twist in, but he weren't having any of it. He's like, put the chicken on first. It's all right, no problem. Table two. Woo. On the grill, AJ is focused on the steaks. AJ, can I have two fries, please? Two chips. But he's falling behind on his side orders. Chips are nightmares. Keep on to restock them, because everyone wants chips. 
A little bit longer. Please. Where's the chips? Where's the chips? Where's the chips? Can I have my chips, please? Yes, chef. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Chef, chips. Hey, you need to get uh, chips out with the sticks, really. Yeah, I've been waiting for uh, a couple of minutes, three minutes. It won't happen again. Back on the south bank, Ooh. the orders are piling up. Lisa, you should have seven duck cooking. Oh, yes, sir. Seven chef. duck, yeah? Going on a duck and oh, a lamb no. next, yes? And Stella and Lisa are having to synchronise dishes. So, Stella, wait, wait, watch. When you see her saucer, you're going to okay. at the same time, yeah? Okay. You're, you're 30 little, seconds on this. 30 seconds and you're perfect, OK? Don't forget the magic ingredient, no, Lisa. No, I got it this time, Chef. How long are those two trout, Clara? Um, three minutes. Three minutes, yeah, please. I'm ready now. The sauce is on, Stella. OK. What's missing, Lisa? Um... What is on that plate that's not on the other two plates? What's this stuff? <gasps> oh, my God, the most that important thing. That needs to go on thing. there. Yeah, exactly, the marmalade. I'm desperate for these trout, Clara. Yep. Clara, oh, Clara, so Clara, Clara, Clara. Just take the asparagus off, run it through a pan, a hot pan, and then put it back on quickly. Take the asparagus yeah? off. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Fill the asparagus, it's a bit cool. Okay. Oh, goodness me. It's so basically my asparagus have gone a bit too cool because nobody wants cool asparagus. Okay, let's go. Okay. Hey, look at that. Look at that. Better? Well done, well done, well done. Beautiful, beautiful. Thanks, Chef. That plate of food I'm happy with. Thank God. I didn't think we were going to get there for a minute. In Piccadilly... I don't even sweat this much in the gym. This is a lot of pressure. Service is still in full swing. Ready for these two, Chef? Make sure both salads look exactly the same. See, that's wrong. There we go. Get up there. Oh, 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 oh. Let's redo this one. Redo so it. you take the salad. Yeah. Yeah, and just need just to turn it around. There, it just stays all together. So you put it once. You don't have to touch it. Yes, chef. God, oh, blimey. Trying to get a salad to stand up is unbelievably hard. But I get what he wants. He wants perfection. He's got customers out there paying. At the end of the day, he wants it to look tip top. AJ's struggling to juggle cooking multiple steak orders. Whoa! Gotta get the lines perfect. Gotta have a crisscross, haven't you? While also keeping on top of his sides. Uh, chips. So I would have some more chips on this one, please. If you top up the, your fries, just top, oh, them, top up. them up. There is two, like, uh, they're half full. Just waiting for the chips now. Just gotta get the chips on, ready for table two. I need seven chicken salad on the pass right away. Guys, this is your last dishes. Yes, chef. AJ, how long for those steaks? They're ready. Medium rare, these ones. They've got to be medium rare. Come on, Jay, let's do it. Yes, chef. The salad is the trickiest spot for you. <laughs> yeah? Just to remember the technique, and then you're going to nail it. Oops. You're doing a great job. Thank you, Chef. Look at that. Bosh. Are you happy, Chef? Very nice. Thank you. Chef's happy, I'm happy. God blimey. AJ, you've got plating to do here, please. Yep. This looks like very nice medium rare. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. So that's table 17. We're done with the service. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Over at the South Bank, lunchtime service is also drawing to a close. Listen in. Three duck, lamb and a trout. It's the last table. We share five minutes. We share. Clara, Stella and Lisa have their final chance to impress Chef Allen. Nearly there. Oh, my gosh. I feel like I'm getting in a bit of a swing now. 
You ready? Um, about one minute. Ready? Almost. OK, that's your last dish. How do you feel? Wow. Well, it was, yeah, yeah. it was intense, Good. to say the least. Stella, that's it. You're finished. Ah! Congratulations. Woo! You're all finished. Yes, Last three yes. dishes. Yeah, that's it. How do you feel? I feel like I've run the marathon. OK, service go, please. <laughs> well done! That experience was probably one of the most intense things I've done in my life because I knew I couldn't let anybody down. It was stimulating, it was exciting, fun working as a team. And I learned some things, you know, the food styling and everything, that was one of the things I really wanted to learn. I don't think it went too badly. I mean, nothing was thrown in the bin. Definitely feel like this was a confidence boost. Onwards and upwards. This is 100% a memory I will never forget, especially this heat. My body's going to be feeling this for the next year. In terms of the soup, I quite enjoyed it. It's insanely intense. Yeah, it's a lot of pressure, but it was good. It was good. Fresh oh, air, fresh air. <laughs> For the first time in the competition, we get to see you cook your own food. The food that you planned and the food you thought about when you first decided to come on MasterChef. Big round, because at the end of this, one of you is going home. Ladies and gentlemen, one hour, two plates of food. Let's cook. I'm really determined today. I'm going to give it all I've got. I'm ready to have at it, as we say. Put me in the ring. I've got my gloves on. I'm ready. <laughs> Stella, you look like you're really enjoying this competition. Oh, I'm having a great time. I just want to win. I realize what I'm here for. It's like opening night every day. What are you making? Well, I have made a country fried chicken, fried potatoes to go with it, and then I'm making a banana pudding, and it's a traditional Sunday after church meal. Put a spoonful of love in everything, and if all else fails, I've got some uh, liquor over here. <laughs> A banana custard and banana liqueur pudding with brown sugar. It's going to be sweet with sweet with lots of sweet things. This country fried chicken from Stella seems to have egg and flour and onion and some spices. As long as Stella doesn't overcook a chicken, there's no reason why that shouldn't be delicious. I might look cool, but I guarantee you, my heart's going like that. It's unbelievable pressure. 100% pressure. Lights are on, cameras on, cook now. Bosh. Whoa. What do you think is at stake today, Jay? I think everything. I don't want to get me P45. Um, so basically, I want to try and stay in the competition, but I'm going to cook a dish that I love eating. Tell me about this dish. Well, basically, I'm off Jamaican and half um, Bayesian. So You've got the Jamaican side, which is the Akin saltfish, and then I'm cooking bakes. What's a bake? Bake is a sweeter version of a dumpling. And what's the other course? A Caribbean chock pot. Can you make it look pretty? I think you can make it look pretty. Wait till you see this, mate. I'm telling you, my one's going to look proper good. Have you seen the colours I've got here? Look, I'm not mucking about. I come here to win, mate. Yeah? Watch this. Cooking here is so different than being in your own kitchen. Greg and John are kind of walking around with their little spoons, tasting things when you're not looking. It doesn't help me. It gives me anxiety. AJ has a bench full of ingredients, and he's attempting a huge amount. 
He's got scallops, one with ham, one with black pudding, served on a pea puree with mint. Main course, he's got a rack of lamb, which he's making a crust with. He's serving that with a parsnip puree, a fond of potatoes, some carrots, and a red wine reduction, which has got raspberries in it. I hope, for AJ's sake, he gets it all done. Because his menu sounds fantastic. How many times have you prepared this lamb dish before? Two or three times, on time. Do you want a place in the next round? Yeah, definitely. Why? Because it's a competition, isn't it? And I'm a competitive person. Go, AJ! Hmm. Today, I am feeling, <laughs> as we all know, my first entry into the kitchen was memorable. I just want Greg and John to be like, OK, you know what? Like, it, it doesn't taste awful. Clara? Hello. How are you doing? I am feeling the pressure because I'm going a bit slower than what I had hoped. What are you making? I am making a... Uh, prawn jambalaya. I love seafood, but really want to go to New Orleans. I'm obsessed with going. What is a jambalaya? It's basically a nice, like, it's like a rice-based dish, and it's just nice and spicy and just, and warming. It's wholesome food. OK, what else are you going to make? Um, I'm going to make a grilled peach dessert with sweet and sour cream and some amaretti. I want them to taste good. I want to put a smile on your face. That rice needs to be cooked all the way through. The veg can't be hard, but they also can't be sloppy. And the prawns don't want to be tough. And the prawns are already cooking. They may be overcooked. You've got 15 minutes to go. I practised twice, but not within the time. The first time I did all of it together, it was nearly a day. <laughs> Lisa, this is a, an extensive list you've got here. It's not really a list, though, is it? It's more of a script. <laughs> it's like the actor walks into the kitchen, he walks over <laughs> to the hob. <laughs> Once he's seen what's going on in the hob, I'm kind of doing a police pretend policewoman, like when I was on the bill. Why? Because that's how I learn things. What are you making? Sirloin steak with uh, mushroom and red wine sauce, with parmentier potatoes, and then I'm doing lemon posset with a blackberries in the bottom. And if we love your food today? Oh, that would just be the best feeling in the world. I don't want a wishy-washy thin bit of red wine sauce. I want to taste the mushroom, I want to taste the red wine, I want to taste the steak. And I want those pimentia potatoes to be crispy and really well seasoned. Three minutes. You've got 90 seconds to finish these plates. <sighs> Typical, honestly. Stop! Everybody, stop! Stop, stop, stop. Time is up. Oh, my goodness. OK. We're expecting a stellar performance. Up you come. Stella has cooked country fried chicken breast, spiced with cayenne pepper, served with paprika potatoes and a creamy chicken gravy. That is perfectly cooked, that chicken in there. Absolutely perfectly moist. It's lovely and soft and a real lovely crispy coating across the top. Potatoes have got paprika on, making that dish even more spicy. Everything on there is, is hot and peppery. That's how I like it. Could I... you bring a pitcher of beer next time? Because <laughs> that's going to make you thirsty. Well, I hope so. You know how to cook a piece of chicken, that's for sure. I love the crispy crunch of the outside. The sauce, I think that's really, really delicious. It's really lovely, very addictive. Thank you. Stella's dessert is a banana and custard pudding 
with banana liqueur and shortbread biscuits topped with brown sugar. That to me is very, very sweet. Oh, is it? It tastes as it should do with the bananas and custard, but there's very little texture in there because the banana dissolves in your mouth. The custard, of course, washed away and you got a little bit of biscuit. It's tasty enough, could be a lot smarter. Thank you. This is a very wet dish. It's also too sweet for me. However, that is fantastic custard. I, I felt proud of, of what I served. <laughs> well done, Stella. I'm not a fancy cook or, you know, high-end cook. I'm used to it being nurturing and comforting. I feel like I achieved that. You're relieved. Clara has made a prawn jambalaya, a Cajun rice dish with peppers, celery, onions and tomatoes. I like the smokiness that's coming from your spices with the tomato sauce. Your vegetables could be cut up a little bit smaller. Your prawns are really hard and overcooked. Really? They only need a matter of minutes and they were boiling away quite frantically for a good 10. OK. Sad prawns. The rice, it's not a big, soft rice dish. It's kind of sauce with the kind of rice accompaniment, and your, and your prawns are overcooked. However, you have got a nice flavour base there, and you definitely are making progress, that's for sure. For dessert, Clara has made grilled peaches with sour cream and crushed amaretti biscuits. That pair of peaches wasn't even on the plate with 60 seconds to go. Yeah. But there was a peach casualty earlier, but it's fine. Your peaches are lovely and soft. They give off a natural sweet juice. You've got the nuttiness that comes from the amaretti biscuits, which are lovely. There's not a lot to it, but it tastes really good. Right on. Yeah. It's a classic, and, and it works. So, well done for that. Thank but you. in terms of appearance, <laughs> it looks slung on. Yeah, because it was. I feel relieved and I'm feeling proud of myself. Well done, girl. <laughs> but yeah, I am kicking myself a little bit when it comes to the presentation. I need to make sure that I allow time for beauty. AJ has made a starter of pan-fried scallops with black pudding, bacon, and a pea and mint puree. Your pea puree is nicely seasoned. I like that a lot. Uh, you've seasoned your scallops, but they're not cooked enough. This really big one is actually bouncy. Get those scallops cooked really well. All of those ingredients are absolutely right, but the scallops aren't cooked properly and they just need a little bit longer, all right? You've got to get a little bit of colour on the outside of them, AJ. For his main, AJ has cooked a basil and parmesan crusted rack of lamb with fondant potato, honey glazed carrots, parsnip puree, and a red wine and raspberry reduction. Your lamb is cooked really nicely. I love the crust around the outside. Your fondant potato is cooked all the way through, which is impressive. Your sauce has got a nice mirror finish on it. To do this and do a starter at the same time in one hour is truly impressive. What you've attempted today, especially in this main course, what you've successfully pulled off, I think is great. Keep on like that and you can only grow and get better and better. I'm really annoyed with myself. It wasn't cooked, the scallops. You get so hot just standing there. Right. I'm not sweating for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> but on a positive note, the lamb was cooked. Phew. Yeah. Lisa's main is sirloin steak in a red wine and mushroom sauce with parmentier potatoes and rocket. Your steak's cooked beautifully. Medium rare as it should be, well seasoned, you let it rest. I love the soft mushrooms in that red wine sauce. Your little potatoes are crispy on the outside. 
I think that's a great steak and chips. Oh, thank you so much. I'm so chuffed. Your potatoes are wonderful and crisp, and that sauce is a triumph. <gasps> that is a quality, quality sauce. Lisa's dessert is lemon posset with blackberries, topped with chervil and edible flowers. Your lemon posset is really nicely made. I like the sharpness of the blackberries in the background. It's nicely presented, makes you feel comfortable. Like you're in Granny's house and she's looking after you. I think the addition of a little bit of light aniseed chervil across the top of that lemon is a great idea. Lisa, you've done really, really well. I can't believe it. It's wonderful, thank you. I feel completely elated. <laughs> I actually did not expect that reaction at all. I feel quite emotional. It's, it's you know, it's crazy. Finally, it's Jay. He served ackee and saltfish with peppers, fried plantain and bakes, a Caribbean fried dumpling. I love your dumplings. You. They're properly stodgy, as they should be. However, with saltfish, the clue is in the name. It is really salty. Your saltfish is really, really strong. I think you can leave it to soak a little bit longer and get rid of a bit more of the salt because it's becoming overpowering. Love the sweet peppers going through it. I would like some more scotch bonnet there. A bit more chilli. That's not very spicy at all. Jay's dessert is Caribbean chocolate mousse pots, flavoured with chilli and rum, and served with sliced mango and cream. I really like your, your pots of chocolate. They're not too sweet at all. They're really thick, they're really bitter, they've got a hint of salt. I think this combination works, but I think they need to be bigger pots and diced mango needs to be on the top. Your chocolate pots are nice, but your chocolate is so strong with cocoa, you can't taste the rum. I feel quite good, actually. I've cooked it. Based on today's tasting, I think I just need to make sure that all the elements work. They're coming on leaps and bounds, aren't they, this mob? Fantastic stuff. Cook of the day for me today was Lisa. Crowd-pleasing food, didn't try and attempt to do too much, but delivered with real finesse and clarity. Two well-made, well-presented dishes. Good effort, Lisa. Sails through to the next round. And the sash for ambition has to go to AJ. I mean, that young fella took on an enormous amount of work, and John, he wasn't that far off. I think that AJ did well. AJ has got to go through. So we've got Lisa and we've got AJ. In my opinion, Stella should go through. Agreed. On the quality of that fried chicken. Tell you what, anybody she's got to feed, whether it be guest judges or guest critics, they're going to love dishes like that chicken. There's no two ways about it. It was beautiful. Absolutely. That leaves us with a conversation about Clara and Jay. Jay made us ackee and saltfish. I would have liked some more of those chilies. I like my ackee and saltfish to be really spicy, and it wasn't. I thought the chocolate pots were, were, were lovely, but they needed another dimension. And I'm not sure a strip of mango and spilt splodge of cream was, was the right accompaniment to them. Clara, I think she got the flavours of jambalaya right, but she, she overcooked the prawns. Her dessert, peaches, soft as you like, amaretti biscuits, and then the cream across the top. It's a great combination. It always works. But she ran out of time, so it was just chucked. I mean, literally chucked on the plate at the end. I would be disappointed if I went today just because I know, I know I've got potential to be better. I hope I've done enough to stay in the competition. As long as you've done your best, that's all you can ask for. Hopefully, I'm going to stay. I think a pretty good round, actually. We ate very, very well. The sad bit is that one of you is leaving the competition. The 
contestant leaving us. It's Clara. Thought so. It's okay. Great competition. Well done. Bye, guys. Bye. Enjoy your cooking. <laughs> Honestly, I don't think I've done myself justice, which is the only thing I'm disappointed about. But, you know, I managed to do it. I did it. I managed to cook in the MasterChef kitchen. Congratulations. You're through the next round. I'm still in the competition. If my mum could see me now, she would just be like, what? I'm absolutely elated. I just wanted to get through the first round. That's, that's it. I mean, I've won now. I'm really relieved, but excited. I feel honored to be here. I'm so happy to get through. It's amazing. Another challenge, another task, another day. Um, get to keep cooking, so I'm, I'm ecstatic.